through glass. Welcome to the McLaren 765LT. Now, if you missed my last video, McLaren have very kindly loaned me this car for 36 hours, but for a fairly specific reason. And that reason is today, they're unveiling the 765LT Spider, but it's not a driving opportunity. It's what I call a, a white box unveiling. The car statically parked up in a in a white box and because I'd never driven an LT until this experience I thought I couldn't really go and film the spider not really knowing what the car's like so yes McLaren very kindly obliged and gave me the keys to this thing and based on the experience I've had with this car over the last 24 hours or so and the experience I had in the 720s spider at the start of the year I'm quite excited for today because we now know that this thing is just ridiculous and insane and mad but kind of brilliant because of it and the 720S Spider allowed in so much more character and personality to the 720 than the coupe usually does by being able to put the roof down or pop down that rear window it lets in the sound of the exhaust but the elements and it just really heightened the experience for me and the one thing which I'd say about the LT Coupe I'm in right now is it's a very mechanical sound it's sort of all very brutal it's almost like a sort of race car where it's not necessarily a symphony but I know from GoPro recordings and things like that that the exhaust sounds mega and every now and again it's gargling and popping so yes the thought of being able to put the roof down in this car or pop a rear window and allow in more emotion makes me think that a 765 LT Spider could be the maddest but kind of most desirable McLaren yet I don't know maybe I'm getting ahead of myself anyway as I say we're onwards now to find this rather nondescript white box of a room and hopefully a very exciting and intriguing 765 LT Spider Whatever you might think about McLaren, you have to admit they know how to spec a launch car. Welcome to the 765LT Spider. In this room, in this setting, in this colour, I think this car looks unbelievable. I actually didn't know it was going to be green. I'm sort of dressed green, so it's a slightly awkward clashing thing. I know fashionistas out there tell me, have I done this right or wrong? I don't know, uh, but it's always cool to see, and you know I love a green car. But yeah, in this kind of room with these lights, just really and it looks, well, like a half a million dollar car, and that's good because that's pretty much what it is. Uh, the Spider is going to start from £310,000, or just over £310,000 here in the UK, and usually I would wince at that. I'd be like, oh my god, so much money, like who's going to spend all that money? Well, if I had it, I probably would, because I think it genuinely looks like it should cost that much. We all know, 765 LT Coupe, expensive looking car, but you know what? Sometimes if you should have catch it at the wrong angle, if you're only sort of glancing, you could maybe think it's just a 720S Coupe, and we know on the used market now, you can get them for a bit of a bargain. But this thing, the fact that you can take that roof down, even in a country like the UK, suddenly just makes it seem and feel a lot more exotic. And then if you're having a bright colour like this, I'm like, heck, as I say, if somebody turned up and said, this is a £400,000 car, I'd be like, well, it's expensive, but I kind of get it. And fundamentally, you probably could get to those kind of levels once you start doing insane MSO options. As you can imagine, with McLaren, you can do amazing coloured carbon fibres and endless bits of trim here and there and everywhere. Um, but I would, I would suggest go with something like this. I think it works really nicely. Anyway, lots to point out with this car. You might think it's just a, well, an LT coupe with the roof that you can put down. It sort of is, but actually there is still stuff to discuss. And I want to point out some of those details and things that have, like stood out to me. But then I want to spin the car around because for me, the sort of coolest elements, the sort of visually most impactful elements are actually around the rear. And I, you know, I like a, well, I was going to say I like a rear end, but that's revealing a bit too much about my personal life. So let's keep it about cars and show you this 765 LT Spider. 
so as I mentioned earlier, spent some time earlier this year in the 720S Spider, and for me, it really enhanced the McLaren experience. You know, I've said it before, years ago, you know, it was easy to kind of knock McLarens in and around town or at low speed and say, oh, you know, they lose some of their, their character, their persona. They are at their best on track on an incredible mountain road, but you know, when you're not on those, are they as exhilarating or as exciting as a Lamborghini or a Ferrari? And maybe I said previously, not so much, but with the Spider, because you can kind of, well, enhance your driving experience by letting some of the emotion, some of the character in from the engine, from the exhaust like that, suddenly the car kind of came alive at any speed, especially when you drop that little rear window sort of behind the driver and passenger seat, letting in all of that kind of noise. Yeah, I just found it a really enjoyable experience. So now to think of that heightened into LT form, I'm like, oh, this might be right up my street. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see here, loads and loads of elements uh, similar to the actual coupe, and then sort of merge with a few things from the 720S Spider, which is fundamentally that roof mechanism, which adds around 49 kilos of weight to the car. But because this thing is just so insane, it doesn't really sort of change much of the performance figures. We've still got the 765 PS, and I think it's the 800 Newton meters of torque, so plenty of that. And I think the only sort of time where it starts to show up as being a tad slower is the 0 to 200 figure, which is 0.2 of a second slower than the coupe. But let's face it, at that point, who really cares? And 49 kilos feels about a third of the sort of amount of weight I've gained during lockdown. So by the time you've got a couple of passengers in this car, it's not about outright sort of, you know, lap times. If you want to go and set Nürburgring lap records, get the coupe. This is about the lifestyle, the experience, the, well, the emotion as well, because as I say, we all know, well, I now know how insane any LT variant is, but especially the 765 LT variant. So the fact that you can now allow all the specialness that's going on back there into that cabin, it just is going to make it such a visceral experience, especially if you're in a car this color. I'm going to keep banging on about it. It's not a brand new color. We're not seeing this kind of new launch color. It just works on this car and with these lights. I think even in the UK, you could pull off a lime green car. Uh, this one, though, actually US spec. You've got sort of side repeaters there, left-hand drive. And what I quite like is there's, a, there's not much exterior carbon fiber on this car. I've banged on about this for a while. Fundamentally, as we know, this entire car is sort of carbon fiber. There's carbon fiber everywhere under the skin, even the floor is carbon fiber, which I think is outrageous and sounds expensive if you uh, scuff it. Um, but yeah, the fact that these sort of, you know, front elements here and side skirts and wing mirrors and things like that, you, you can go carbon fiber here, you can, you can have all of this in carbon fiber, but, but maybe don't, because maybe it's a nicer, softer look. Um, but having said that, as I teased earlier, if you went MSO and got sort of green exterior carbon fiber everywhere, would that look cool? Would that look a bit crazy? I don't know. Someone's going to do it, so let's wait and see. Um, but I have to say, yeah, I really like the painted look. Uh, just 765 LT spiders, like the coupe, are going to be made. Uh, if you're someone who's into conspiracy theories and you're like, oh, whatever, they're definitely going to make more than that, come up with a kind of cool idea there to, to debug your myths. Um, because the chassis number, which appears obviously in the front of the windscreen, is going to be matched with the little plaque you have inside. So down there, you've got a little thing saying 765. LT and that will be, you know, your number 72 of 765 made and that will be tied into that chassis number at the front. So yeah, <laughs> lots of you car spotters, if you're out there and you want to try and figure it out, you can ask owners if they'll very kindly let you look at their VIN number and their plaque, but I'm not sure everyone's going to allow you, but you can try. Uh, anyway, as I mentioned, as impressive and as cool as this thing looks, for me, some of the sort of most standout features, some of the most beautiful, though I say it, features are actually round the back. So let's start this beast up, spin it around, and I'll show you those. <laughs> Here we go, the long tail. You can see sticking out quite aggressively from the rear like that. I just love this lip and this entire design. So different to the 720S, the actual sort of engine cover bay dips down underneath the wing here, allowing airflow onto that kind of rear deck, just pushing the rear of the car down, adding for the stability. But I think also the overall look, it just looks like it all kind of falls down under that as I say, long tail, and then these kind of insane quad exhaust tailpipes, and then look, 
look at all the kind of open elements here. Now make jokes or whatever jokes you want about McLaren's overheating or fires. They're really working towards that not happening here because it's all open. I mean, the heat can just pour out of this thing, which is absolutely amazing. Actually, even over here, there's little holes and sort of gills so that when the car's static, heat can pour out of there as well. But, but whilst it's got a functional use, I think it makes it look really cool. I'm trying to think what it reminds me of, maybe like Ferrari F50 or elements of P1, uh, where, as I say, it just looks sort of open. You can notice different things, the heat shielding around the exhaust and other little components and elements. And I can imagine if you're following this car in traffic, you're sitting at traffic lights, I bet you start to notice loads of different things by looking through some of those holes. And of course, as you can see, that big old diffuser and other elements going on as well here. You've got sort of bits helping with the airflow around the side, just kind of Oh, this whole car has just got endless things you can look at and you can see and you can notice that just scream high speed performance. But yeah, as I say, for me, it's this angle that makes this car really stand out, especially with that roof down, where you start to notice these, these kind of flying buttresses, obviously uh, incorporating the, the roll over elements in case the car ever decides to mm, <coughs> roll over. Let's hope that doesn't happen. But I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to have to be very careful here with my, my hand. Let me try and carefully put that in there. Dun, 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 dun. Can you see that? They're glass, they're sort of see-through. So the point being that if you're in the driver's seat or even the passenger seat and you want to look up and over, over your shoulder, you can see through them, which I think is such a nice thought, a nice element, just helping with that overall visibility. That's the big thing with the 720S, is it really has got great visibility when you're driving around, around town or out and about. You can really see, and you're gonna get a lot of the light. Obviously, you get all the light when the roof is down, but that's just a very nice thought, I think. Um, but also that's helping with that airflow, tucking it around behind these buttresses, and then down towards that sort of sloping scoop underneath that tail. So it's just cool. And it's not often you get a chance to get up close to a car like this in a setting like this where you can admire all of these details. Amazingly fortunate, very lucky to get down here today to see this car, kind of its very early launch. Of course, dynamic drives at some point in the future. God knows when I, I really want to plan like to take this to like Cape Town. When's that going to be possible again? Who knows? So for now, just being able to see it, as I say, under these lights, really, really sort of pick away at all the sort of details has been ace. And as I say, the fact that I now get to leave here and jump into a 765 LT Coupe, it's pretty silly life at the minute, isn't it? Things are starting to look up. <laughs>